What's up, Harvey Geek here. Okay, so for me, the Lenovo Legion 5 looks like a combination between your uncle's work notebook and a gaming laptop. Impressive and minimal look on the outside and aggressive specs on the inside. But instead of being a budget-friendly gaming laptop, the Legion 5 has evolved into a more upscale model. The growth of the IdeaPad Gaming 3 family and unquestionably the improved performance numbers of all Intel, AMD and Nvidia contribute to this. And speaking of the Pro edition of Legion 5 from last year, Legion 5 Pro in general was very well liked by consumers for two primary reasons. First, it featured really great specifications including a 500 nits 165Hz color accurate quad SD display, a high wattage RTX 3060 and an excellent CPU. Secondly, it had really outstanding cooling system, great build quality with minimal aesthetic and was competitively priced. Likewise apply to the slightly cut down version, the Legion 5 that we are reviewing here. Not to mention the 2022 model. Now this year's model is now even better since it has the most recent Ryzen 7 6800H processor and an Nvidia RTX 3060 with a 140W TGP, which is 10W higher than the previous model. For the CPU, the 6800H, it is an 8-core 16-thread processor that can support up to 4800MHz DDR5 RAM modules and has a boost clock speed of 4.7 GHz. If you look at its performance feats, in Cinebench R23, it is 16% faster than 5800H in multi-core results and 8% faster in single-core scores. So basically a minor update over the previous 5800H, not a significant performance bump like the 12th generation Intel. And same can be said about the Geekbench 5 score, that shows the same kind of result with 7% faster in single core and 16% fatter in multi core. So if you are getting this processor for the same price or lower, then it is recommended to go with 6800H. Otherwise, paying somewhat more than 5800H is not a justification of value for money, as 5800H is a still very very capable CPU. Overall, it is capable of handling any type of workloads, whether it be for coding, 3D rendering, music production, or video editing. The RTX 3060 on this device is fed 140W, which makes it one of the high-powered RTX 3060 that you can find on a gaming laptop. So you can guess what performance will it pump out. Finally, Lenovo has decided to put some metal on the Legion 5. It can be found on the lid. And not only does it provide a more premium feel, but it also makes the lid far more resistant to flex. Expectedly, the lid can be opened with a single hand. The hinges are significantly more stable than those on the IdeaPad Gaming 3 which is the second reason we would justify paying more for the Legion 5. It also sports thin top and side bezels with the former featuring an optional Full HD web camera. As you can see, there is no privacy shutter, but on the side you will find a kill switch that electronically disables the camera. The display on this device is a 15.6 inch IPS panel. It's decently bright, color accurate and really fast in games. So there isn't much else to say about the display. It's an awesome screen. Now, the keyboard on this beast is absolutely amazing. It has a ton of key travel, features clicky feedback, it makes it one of the best units for gaming and basically perfect for typing. Here the touchpad is quite big, with a size of 75 by 120mm, its mylar surface is smooth, the tracking is good and the response time is super quick. For the ports, on the left side there is a USB Type-C 3.2 Zen 2 port with DisplayPort 1.4 output as well as a USB 4. Respectively, on the right, there is a USB Type-A 3.2 Zenon port and an audio jack. Most of the ports are situated on the back. There you will find a LAN port, another USB Type-C 3.2 Zen 2 port, an HDMI 2.1 connector, two USB Type-A 3.2 Zen 1 ports and the power connector. And one thing I discovered is that if you disable the Optimus using the mug switch, the leftmost rear USB Type-C also support USB 4 connections. 
So theoretically, you could connect a Thunderbolt 4 device to this Type-C port. But as of right now, I am not sure if it will work or not. So if you are really concerned about Thunderbolt 4, you could choose the Intel version of this laptop. Now, only one Type-C port on the back can be used to charge the laptop and it supports up to 135 watt. But only if you use the Lenovo branded power delivery charger, which you can purchase from the company's official website. If you turn the laptop upside down, you will see the ventilation grill and the speaker cutouts. The heat exhaust happens through two vents on the back and one on each side of the laptop. The cooling system seems like nothing too special with one heat pipe shared between the CPU and GPU and one more for each of them. Then there are four heat sinks, two fans and a couple of big heat spreaders for the VRMs and the graphic memory. The temperature are really excellent when you consider that the machine has a beefy 140W GPU inside. And what's fascinating about this is that Lenovo was able to achieve this level of thermal performance without using any of the fancy vapor chambers or liquid metal thermal dissipating systems. Battery size is same as the previous model, a 80W or 6 cell. But the battery life is little less than the last model. It was able to get around 2.5 hour of battery backup on continuous gaming. So not a huge contender in battery department. The laptop also sports a decent upgrade package. It has two SODIMM slots which work with DDR5 RAM and are upgradable up to 32 gigs, as well as two M.2 PCI X4 slots which are Gen 4 SSD capable and support 1TB each. Now my final thoughts. So the big question now is should you buy a less powerful Legion for same money as a more powerful IdeaPad Gaming 3? The answer to this depends on what you are willing to do with your laptop. If you are after pure performance, then the biggest part of your budget should go for the best hardware. However, if you want to use your gaming laptop for work or school or you just out after premium build quality, then getting the Legion 5 is a no-brainer. And as always, the buying links are in the description box below. So that's pretty basically sum up the review of Legion 5. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, a like would be appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.